Hey everybody, back with another video. I came across this video called How is Australia So Rich? So of course after learning what the average wage was in Australia, I was pretty interested in this video. So let's check it out. 0.32% That is the total population of the planet that lives in Australia. At around 26 million inhabitants, it is the 53rd most populated country in the world. A gigantic oh, no. country that itself is a continent located down under. It is rather secluded and thousands of kilometers away from any other major civilization. Yet it has the 13th largest economy on the planet and Australians find themselves as being the 20th richest on earth in terms of GDP per capita. So just how is Australia so wealthy? I'm your host Sam, and you're watching The Geography Podcast. Let's find out. First of all, let's take some in-depth look at Australia's economy and financial statistics. As mentioned earlier, they have the 13th largest economy on the planet, with a GDP of around 1.6 trillion US dollars, putting them above Spain and just below Brazil. That number alone is pretty crazy. One trillion dollars, but I'm sure there's countries that have way more than that because it's the 13th. So I wonder what the first is. Country with over eight times the population and surrounded by many other countries. Australia's GDP per capita for purchasing power is just shy of 55,000 US dollars, which works out to roughly 77,000 Aussie dollars, placing them above the likes of Canada, the UK and France, but just mm. below Germany, Sweden and Austria. And finally, Australia ranks as having the eighth highest average salary in the world. So, some very impressive stats for a country where 90% of people live in just 3% of its land. That's so crazy to me still, to think that in Australia you only live on the edges. But of course that's because in the middle it's mostly desert, but every time they talk about it, it is pretty crazy. So, first things first. Australia is incredibly rich in minerals. Oh. There is such an abundance of minerals that it not only meets its internal needs, but it also covers the needs of many other countries around the world, meaning it can export these precious commodities in exchange for dollars. In 2020, Australia was the largest producer of lithium. You might Wow, look at that. That's so much more than everybody else. Don't they use this for like car batteries or phone batteries or something? To have heard of this compound, it is used in mm, batteries. Okay. And in case you haven't noticed, batteries are extremely important in oh, today's yeah. digital age. Yep. Especially with the gigantic boom in electric cars. Does anyone here have a Tesla? If you do, leave a comment below. Just wondering. Therefore, Australia is capitalizing on this opportunity, especially in China, where 41% of all electric vehicles were purchased in 2020. Australia is also the largest aluminium and opal producer in the world and the third largest producer of diamonds. Another oh, wow. that helps to propel Australia to the top of the rich list is food. And its food industry is almost entirely based on local produce. As Australia is not short of space, it has vast areas of the country occupied by cereal crops. Because Australia is just so darn big, it has many different climates and can grow different fruits and vegetables mm, that can be found in different okay. climate zones around the world. In the north, you have rainforest conditions. You see, when I heard that you guys have so many climates in your country, I didn't even think about how the, how the foods you were able to produce. So that's, that's cool center you have desert and then far down into tasmania you have temperate climates which are more like that of the uk's also australia is one of the countries with the largest herds of livestock around the world the number of sheep in the country is the second largest in the world oh wow behind china and for beef exports only brazil beats the aussies australia's total export value is just shy of 500 billion us dollars with China, Japan, and South Korea, three other major economies, being their biggest trading partners. Australia ranks wow. as being the eighth highest country on the Human Development Index. The index consists Wow, I had no idea. The health, education, and income in a given country to provide a measure of human development, 
which is comparable between countries and over time. Scoring high in this index usually means that the country is in a great place in terms of finance, society, education, and quality of life. It doesn't mean that it's perfect, but when a country accepts that building, every time I see it, beautiful. In all of these sectors, it usually translates to a strong and healthy economy. A country with poor education, working standards, civil war, and unrest will be very unlikely to have a booming economy with wealthy citizens. For example, the DR Congo is one of the most naturally rich countries on earth, has a population of around 90 million and a super young populace of around 17 years on average. Yet, it is one of the most corrupt and poor nations on earth, with an economy of just 50 billion US dollars. Australia's relative peace has also helped to maintain its strong economy and position. Over the last century, Europe has been annihilated flat twice. South America and Africa wrecked by civil wars and coups, and Asia all of the above. Australia and North America as well have been pretty much untouched, and so are wealthy. This isn't... Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I guess Australia didn't have many wars. ...say that Australia hasn't invested and been involved with wars, but there is certainly oh, okay. no air raid blitzes over the Sydney Opera House. Oh. Its immigration policy is another factor that plays an important role to its wealth. Unlike... Hold on, what? There has certainly been no air raid blitzes over the Sydney Opera House. Its immigration po The Opera House was bombed? Oh, damn. See, ...is another factor that plays an important role to its wealth. Unlike other countries that have immigration policy aimed at greater cultural and ethnic diversity and to attract younger workers to help stimulate their economy due to an aging population, Australia concentrates on bringing in highly skilled and needed workers, as opposed to just anyone. Yeah, For example, that. if Australia starts to find that they have a shortage of doctors, engineers and teachers, they will slacken their immigration rules to allow more of these highly skilled workers to enter. Australia's education system is one of the best in the world. It is modern and highly regarded. Therefore, many international students who of course have wealthy families may apply to live and study in Australia. These then already wealthy students may go on to secure high paying jobs and further boost the Australian economy. Pre-pandemic, Australia was a dream destination. Wow, that's beautiful, man. I wouldn't mind trying that right there. Looks like fun. Travelers from all across the globe, including myself, would flock to the land down under to see its many incredible attractions and soak in its gorgeous sunshine. Cosmopolitan cities, national parks, architectural landmarks, beaches, and amazing weather. It's no surprise that in 2019, Australia's income from tourism was around 42 billion US dollars, about 3.2% of its GDP. I feel like we've seen this B roll before in another video. P, the seventh highest in the world. From the Sydney Opera House to Ayers Rock to the Great Barrier Reef, Australia has some of the world's most fascinating landmarks and attractions. Mm -hmm. Australia's booming housing market is great for bringing in money to the country on taxes due to massive demand of new building. Yeah, those housing prices skyrocketed, I've heard. Homes, but not so great for the everyday Australian trying to buy a house. Very similar to what I see in London. The mega rich from all across the planet buy properties in cities. And I mean, it's skyrocketed over here too, so it's probably, probably almost doubled compared to a few years ago. That are well developed and wealthy, as there is only a finite amount of space in cities like Sydney, Melbourne, and Perth, which are all extremely desirable. The cost of housing continues to go up and up and more and more are being built. In the year 2000, the average house in Sydney would set you back around $312,000. Oh, wow. Today, it is more like 1.6 million. God. The average Sheila simply cannot afford this insane amount. I can't. However, a billionaire living in China or Japan can buy several houses and rent them out for profit. Just recently, Australia ranked as the second most agile country in the world, only behind the US. For a country to be agile, it must adapt and respond to whatever obstacles it faces. To do this, a country needs to be efficient in its actions, adopt and accept modern solutions, and progress to meet changing circumstances. Okay. And last but not least, it is important to say a few words about... 
Good job, Australia. Successful Anglo-Saxon economic model. This is a kind of capitalism that is characterized Ooh, by certain cool. specifics, especially when it comes to taxes. The Anglo-Saxon model usually means less government interference and less regulations. The private sector dominates and the private property enjoys a central role. Although absolutely not perfect, this model has proven to be extremely successful in countries from around the world, such as New Zealand, the UK, the Republic of Ireland, the United States, Canada, and many more. So overall, Australia is a well-developed country that has one of the strongest immigration policies in the world, is a tourist hotspot outside of pandemics, has a booming export and skilled workforce with a vast amount of... Yeah, from what we think here in the States is that it's pretty pretty hard to get into Australia if you want to move there. But yeah, for me, I just want to visit for now. Hopefully one day. Natural resources, which allows it to be one of the richest countries in the world with a very high quality of life. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something new, feel free to drop it a like. And if you love this sort of content, consider subscribing. You can That was good, you guys. Again, it's called How is Australia So Rich in 2023? It has 1.3 million views wow okay well that gives me a good idea of why australia is so rich you guys have so many resources so much exporting so it makes sense but if you like this video leave a like comment subscribe maybe if you want to and i appreciate all of you thank you bye